Who is a trichologist and how to find a good one? How come can I treat people but I'm not a doctor? Is trichology just a gimmick and can it be dangerous? Today we are going to talk all about trichologists and how to differentiate a good one from a non-competent one. Hi, I'm Agatha and I'm a trichologist and hair loss expert. On this channel we take a scientific look at popular hair problems to help you keep your hair on your head and keep it looking fabulous. If you want to become a hair expert yourself, please subscribe to my channel, click the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any info that might help you solve your hair issues. First and foremost, Trichologist is not a doctor, because trichology is not being recognized as a standalone area of medicine. Trichologist is a hair and scalp specialist, paramedical health specialist, just like a nutritionist for example. A competent trichologist should work closely with your medical doctor to find out whether any medical problems are associated with your hair loss. Your physician should also be willing to work with your trichologist with respect to taking and analyzing blood tests that your trichologist suggests. The only way a trichologist could actually be a doctor is if they did their medical degree in other area, like for example dermatology, and then got a separate training in trichology afterwards. So you'd have to actually have a medical degree in another field, then specialize in trichology. Trichologist is not a scientist. I've seen this term hair scientist thrown around different hair care forms. Well, I'm sorry, but do people who claim to be a hair scientist actually have a PhD in anything? Now, I don't know what that term refers to, but it certainly does not refer to a trichologist. A scientist is usually someone who has an expert knowledge of one or more of the natural or physical sciences and systematically gathers and uses research and evidence to make hypotheses and test them to gain and share understanding and knowledge. That knowledge should not be proving that mental thrown into a coke makes it explode or that head and shoulders shampoo gave you a rash. This research should contribute to society and tackle serious scientific questions. I think calling a trichologist a scientist when they don't have a relevant scientific contribution record is a bit too fancy. The only reason I say that is because I just don't want you to fall for many of the fancy marketing that is being used. Many people use these fancy terms to draw you into thinking that they provide some sort of unique service or that they have some sort of unique knowledge that nobody else has. Well, they don't. So what should you look for in a good trichologist? Well, they should have their trichology certificate, obviously, but there's two ways to become a trichologist, the wrong way and the right way. You see, Becoming a trichologist is easy, way too easy, because there's plenty of trainings online that can make you trichologist literally overnight. Because it's not being recognized as a standalone area of medicine, there's not really any regulations on who can call themselves a trichologist and how to certify those people. There's many popular training websites that offer you online courses with PDF certificates that you can just go out and buy for close to nothing. You can go on their website, look up trichology training, pay X amount of money, and boom, you're a trichologist. They do let you download or access a short training, usually in a form of presentation that takes few hours to read. So no, you don't need any medical degree, you don't need any medical knowledge whatsoever, and you don't even have to take a test. But most importantly, you don't even have to see any patient, treat anyone, or get any experience in diagnosing anything. Sounds scary? These people can do a whole lot of damage, or at the very least, waste your time and money. So what type of training should they have? They should do a real stationary training that involves many hours of practice on real patients, doing real treatments, analyzing blood tests, and giving their patients advice that actually has helped somebody and solved their issue. You can do that in an overnight online course, you do that after years and years of experience in practicing. So don't be afraid to ask how they got their title and where they practiced. In addition to a certificate, it's really good if they have a medical education background. So studies in biology, chemistry, physics, any medical studies, nursing school. It doesn't have to be a degree, but some sort of proof of medical understanding that has been documented on paper always helps. There's also a group of trichologists who are actually hairdressers after a trichology course. This in theory could be a great combo, but I'll be extra careful here. Hairstylists are usually great at recognizing different scalp issues because they see various scalp problems all the time. So while they may be able to recommend you some topical treatments for external symptoms, I find that if they don't have any medical experience on top of that, they don't often know how to advise you on which blood test you should take or know how to interpret your results when you bring them in. 
Unfortunately, in many cases that I've heard about, hairdressers would only offer to do a scalp examination just so they can sell you a treatment or a product from their salon. Trichology consultation is not a beauty treatment that you do in between highlights when there's other people in the salon around getting their hair done. It should be treated as a visit to the doctor's office in a private and intimate space where you're comfortable talking about your health issues. Can you imagine talking about your period being late, your weight gain or your depression while there is another person sitting next to you getting their hair done? Mm. And those are the topics that should be discussed during a trichology consultation because they are all very relevant to the diagnosis and you should be in an environment where you feel comfortable talking about anything. So how do you know when to run? When your trichologist wants to get straight into treatments, does not look at your blood work and is not really interested in your health history, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. When your trichologist is not interested in your health parameters, then I'm sorry, but he's just wanting to sell you a service and that's all. You're not going to get real help. When your trichologist recommends you to do a microneedling, plasma, mesotherapy or other injectables without checking your antibody level first. More specifically, ANA. This is super important because most people don't know that they have these antibodies. And if you do, and you get the treatments that involves breaking or puncturing your skin tissue, you may develop scarring. Those antibodies are indication that you have some sort of connecting tissue disorder. And if you happen to have them and then proceed with the treatments that punctures your skin, like mesotherapy, for example, you will end up developing permanent scarring on your scalp. And scarring is especially problematic if you suffer from hair loss because no hair will ever grow back on a scar tissue. If you develop scars on your head, then you successfully eliminated any possibility of regrowing your hair back as there will be no hair follicles left in those spots anymore. And there's no way to reverse that, so be very cautious with injectables. And if your trichologist is trying to push plasma or vitamin mesotherapy to you without testing antibodies first, run. They don't know what they're doing. When they offer to do a consultation or scalp examination with other people around in the hair salon. Just like I said earlier, if they don't recognize that a trichology consultation should be treated as a medical one, then they don't probably realize the seriousness of your issue either. Whenever you're uncomfortable with the environment you're in, just speak up and if you still think it's shady, just trust your gut and leave. When they really try to push you one brand of product and supplements. Guys, if they do that, then they are either involved in multi level marketing or they have a distribution deal with the brand and get a commission. I do get that some brands are fantastic, well tested, and proved effective. So it's a natural that they want to recommend them. But if they claim that only this product will help you and this product only will save your hair and nothing else will, they're lying. A competent trichologist should be able to look at the ingredients label, identify which active ingredients make this product effective for your condition and find replacement if necessary. There usually are other products on the market containing the same type of active ingredients. There's no rocket science to it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Uh, let me know your thoughts and questions in the comments below and I will do my best to reply to all of you.